and you will ask. So uh, and just try to remind at the end of last class we did this culture of force, culture and force. First, we know that this force is uh, can <coughs> not be expressed strictly. Uh, you also need to take the quantum exam, right? Yes. So as I mentioned, the, pro the quantum mechanics homework, forget this building, it just focus on the, the quantum exam. Yeah. After that, uh, we can check. Uh, it makes difficulties to solve the equation of motion since they need a force. So it reduces the number of degree freedom. Okay, I think that is the end of last class. So now we keep continuing. Now, this, this is a recursive difficulties, right? So in particular, we cannot express the constant force straightforward and how to deal with. So we are going to think about, okay, think about this. We know what is the effect of this constant force, the condition of constraint, right? So if we can write down the equation of that condition, and that may help us. So that is the next step, the equation of constraint. Which is a condition. Conditions of constraint. The goal is two, two, two to solve this one. And this one, uh, and this one we are going to discard after we introduce this. So now, what is the equation of constant means? We are going to see like this. This is the limit on the surface, right? So that means the position or the coordinates like x, y, z during the motion has some condition. So that could x, y, z maybe have follow some of a relation. And that relation is this. So now, Example, right? Uh, okay, that's it. What kind of the mathematically try to express the effect of the constraint? What is if we have suppose the okay, just write it here. R one, if the system is n particle, right? This is a function we do not know, but we call if this function equal to zero, that is the equation of constraint. So sum of constraint we can write down in this way. Only a function of coordinates or in, in this type. Or which is not equal. Um Let's uh, use general. Maybe they have time or not, but it's just not equal to zero, not exactly equal to zero, or not only depend on uh, uh, the, the uh, constraint on the coordinates, but also this velocity. 
and you start in sort of elastic work, your first order duty, right? Uh, even here, equal to zero, but we have a this term. So you see this different type of country, and uh, let's uh, give uh, some examples and uh, uh, discuss this different type of a country. So how to give a name, right? So we are going to use the uh, term knowledge to define the uh, country in different way. One way is this only the function of coordinates or time, right, with equal. So we call this polynomial, uh, polynomial. or this edge, polynomial constraint. And this is the most case we are going to uh, fit the, uh, 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 in, uh, uh, deal with this, and uh, that is important when we develop the Lagrange equation. This is a condition. So that is, and uh, this one, others, right? Those are now constraint. Let's just say, in terms of whether this uh, constraint only a function of the coordinates or time equally or other case, not equal, or with a velocity. So we call this is a, a, a polynomial constraint and the uh, uh, non-polynomial constraint. Another way to distinguish is in terms of whether the constraints depend on time explicitly or implicitly. So even this one, we can also use, for example, here, this is explicitly, right? This Maybe it does not depend on time or depend on time implicitly. So we have another case. Let me just give a same time given name. It's a scalar nomic and a real nomic. Yes. Yeah. So another way is uh, scalar. What's the name? Yes, scalar nomic. Or this depends on time depends on T explicitly this is a, a, a depend or does not depend on time, depend on T implicitly or independent. So that means either you classify in terms of this way, see whether it depends on coordinates or not coordinates or equal or not equal or this relative or in terms of the time, dependent time or independent time. So now let's uh, do some examples and see how can we uh, understand this uh, constraint in particular, how to write down the constraint, right? So let's first study this uh, example of uh, example of Body. Rigid body means we have a, let's just see, this is body we have n particle, right? We have a coordinate here. Uh, uh, so here, this is the ice position here, but the inside the body is a GS, right? And we have a M, I, M, G. Rigid means Ri minus the difference between these two will always is constant, right? No any relative change between the this uh, uh, particle the position. In. So that is rigid, right? So that means if this uh, the particle relative, suppose the central mass, it will 
equal to zero. No, any change relative r prime or r a prime zero. Uh, sorry, dr of prime zero does not change dr. Uh, r equal to zero, right? Something like this. So in that case, then how to write this? That means all this r i minus r g square, the distance the different distance is different, right? So that is this equal to c i j square, right? I'm going to say c i j depends on i and j. Then if I move this to the left hand side, so we have r i j, uh, sorry, r i minus r j square minus c i j square equal to zero, right? So that is function of r1 equal to rn equal to zero. Here, I, okay, I and j from one if we have uh, the n particles. So how many uh, uh, equations? You can either add those together, because this zero plus zero plus zero all are zero, right? That is one way. Who are you just at each individual? R i j equals this one equation, and how many i and j from one to n? So whatever, this is a function satisfy this one, right? So this is how we do This is my example. Second one, simple pendulum. So simple pendulum is like the, we have a fixed is a, a, a point here, right? So if we set up x coordinates and y, then the pendulum here is this is the mass, right? And this is a, uh, uh, the, the motion, whatever. So if I say this L is a length from here to here, okay, and then we have an uh, angle, and angle will change. So we know the pendulum will do uh, oscillate. Uh, about this vertical uh, uh, equilibrium position in the plane, vertical plane, so this function is only x and y. No z, right? If you z, z is another, it's also fine. This is, you know, it's like circumference. So for this case, what kind of function? Who can write down? This is a fix, right? So what that means? Any time x and y has a relation with L, what is relation? Right? Always. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to move the L square to the left hand side. So I have this equal to zero, right? And this, this fellow, this here. So that is another case to show this uh, hol uh, holonomic. Now, uh, let me get more since this uh, a little new for us, maybe. I hope. Then let's uh, learn, try to learn more. So I think let me use this space. Three is uh, a box. Slide down on the slope. Slide, okay. Slide down. Surface. This slope. So here, the picture is like this. We have slope and we have a box here. Go to this one. Can you write down this uh, function? Uh, you can either select x uh, or coordinates, y coordinates, but I prefer select x along this because it's simple, right? And y is here. So what is motion? It only along x, right? Cannot go y, and of z is perpendicular to this uh, screen. So that means y is equal to zero. And if you consider z also equal to zero, it's also fine. So this two is, again, only depend on coordinates, right? And you get that equal to zero. So that is, in this case, we have uh, the constant, which is uh, how long. Uh, 
so we have a particle move inside the inner surface of the sphere. It's constrained with that motion, constrained to uh, the inner surface of the sphere. So now let's consider the hemisphere. Okay. And uh, suppose this is uh, this is R, the radial sphere. In the inner surface is a particle here, right? Inner surface. You move inside. Okay, so any time you have X, Y, Z. It's limited on the surface, not in any space inside the sphere, only on the surface. So who can tell me the constraint x, y, z? Any place is be always equal to r, right? Right? OK. So or you move, so then if you move to r to the left hand side, then that gave us 0. That is the end of this case. Okay, number five, I think uh, this is a good uh, practice. So two box connect uh, with, uh, to the three uh, polys. So let's see this one, this one, two blocks. So how to control the right down the constraint for this one? We know this two box is uh, move this way, but the constraint because the length of the <coughs> the length of the roof is fixed, right? So the motion of this uh, poly uh, polys and these blocks to be related to this. So now let's first set up the coordinates we are going to set up. Right? So now what to do is to characterize motion, I suppose we select this as zero because we know this center is fixed, right? So this as zero. Now uh, the first one, this one, I'm going to put. I'm going to, this is actually, and uh, uh, this one, so uh, from here, this is x1, and then from here, See the first uh, uh, x, okay. This x we already here. So that is x4. Then this one, I'm going to say x2. Okay, once we cycle this, can you write down the relation between x1, x2, x3, x4, and l? Okay. So, uh, oh, I know, that's just a little 
Let's think about, we know this loop L1 is equal to the loop R. This is capital R. This is the same value, but this is a lower R. OK, so here, this is the x. Uh, uh, the loop is here, right? So uh, the loop, right? This distance plus this path type, and plus here, and plus this one, and plus this distance and this one, right? So that means L1, let's see, L1 is pi r. First, I'm going to take this one, and this is x3, right? Plus x3. Oh, sorry, no. X3, X3 mine, uh, okay, that is be this one. X4 is this center, minus X3 is, uh, I define, so that means like this, uh, I need this distance, right? But this is X3, yes, that is correct. X3, yes, X1, first X1 also. So here, this one, x1, and another pi r, right? This one. And then come to here. This be x4 minus x3, right? This distance. This one. And then we have another lower pi r. So that makes sense, right? So now, that makes sense? OK, x1, and then this pi r. And uh, let's, this part is x4. This is x. This difference, right? This difference. And then this lower pi r, and then x4, and another pi r. So that is L1. And then L2 is x2, right? That is, uh, this, this, this is another loop. So those together is a constraint on this uh, dimension. And uh, you can see here, this only depends on the position. So again, it is for uh, so uh, I just select several uh, different examples, and uh, you will play the, the um, in details in when you deal with the different system. But just give you the way to analyze. You need the first. So I set up the coordinates and see whether the coordinate has a relation with uh, the condition. Right? Uh, that is the example for the for this uh, uh, holonomic. And now let's go to non holonomic non holonomic let's uh, 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 move this. So now we're going to example of now. Which type is uh, non holonomic Let's consider an example. Okay, now we have for the, this uh, the disk rolling down on the, uh, uh, this uh, implant with a uh, uh, sleeping without sleep, so ruling no so what, what kind of sliding, sorry this is the central mass this is the velocity here and this rotation is this is rotation here so without sleep means the, the velocity here, actual velocity is zero, right? And here, the velocity are two one. One is, uh, I think I just know how to do it. Right this way, try to go that. So one is the speed here is a, if I, I select this theta here, so it's really a theta dot. Another is this one is the way c, yeah, right, center of mass. So that is the condition, that means the velocity c center of mass equal to the, ro uh, the rotation, the linear velocity of rotation, right? And if you select, this is an x-axis. So this one is x dot, right? So I have x dot, a theta dot. Or x dot minus a theta dot equal to zero, so that is this one. In this case, does not depend on time, but this is belong to this. Now this, then that is not common. So that is the example. One example. Let's see if I have another. Yeah, 
more examples, three examples, but still. Uh, okay, I think we know the definitions of the new system. Second question. Consider gas inside the con uh, container. So we have a container here, and what the particle is inside, right? Any motion, I'm free. So if we have the, uh, this LX, LY, LZ, what is question? Any particle, this is a X, I, Y, I, G, I. What is question? The gas mo uh, molecule can, or particle cannot go out of the container, right? So, okay. XI is always limited, right? X components only limited between the L equal to zero, uh, the zero and the LX, right? And similarly, YI, VI, That is this case. Not equal, but within some range is allowed, the particle can move within the range. So that kind of condition, we call this non harmonic Does that make sense? OK. So uh, you can either say xi minus lx is, right? That is when the function is like this. It's a similar for what? So that is the second example, third example. And I is slightly down, slightly off, uh, oh. So what kind of is called is like this, which are R, and then the I is, is okay. Let's try to slide it down here, right? So this is uh, if you use uh, uh, R and theta to this correct. So that is, uh, suppose you see that. Uh, this is R, and I think this is a radio capital R for the ball. So what that means? The part the S cannot get into the ball, right? So it should be always equal to the cap data radio R or larger than that. So that means R square always okay that is I use A to me that always uh, that means either equal to A the radio of the ball or larger than that. Not even when they fall down, they go to this way, right? If I fall down to this, so then the larger. So that is another condition. We call this a constraint non polynomial constraint. It's, it's not equal. Just give a range. Uh, this is number three. <coughs> okay. Uh, let me take more. It's about this uh, in terms of this uh, scleronomic uh, uh, or real nomic. Time dependent explicitly or independent. So now let's consider. Examples uh, uh, here and see this like two, uh, uh, two examples. Actually, most case the scalar uh, nomic is holonomic, uh, or I mean the holonomic in most case it, it does not if not explicit is this one. Right? So we just uh, select again the first the rigid body. And I do not need to find a, a plot of the figure so that uh, this always so that's not the on time, right? That's so that is definitely is a scalar uh, uh, nomic. Second, let's let do more 
uh, a case. So we have several cases. I might uh, consider double plane. Thank you. Okay, double planting that the uh, the block here. This is the shielding here. We have a fix here. The first pendulum is here. Then one. Then another one. Then two, right? So if we have a this is theta one, theta two. Okay, and we have this is L one. So here you have x1, y1. Consider still uh, the oscillation in the vertical plane, so no three components. X2, y2. So in this case, we know any case, the x1 square plus y square always equal to l1 square, right? And uh, uh, how about this one? That's be x2 minus x1. Right, so that we have this first. That's x one square plus y one square minus l one square zero. That is the uh, first one. First pendulum. The second for the loop is this difference. So that is x two minus x one square plus y two minus y one square minus l two square zero. So we have a two equation of constraint, and this gives us this uh, limit or uh, limit the motion of at uh, the particle M1 and particle M2. This limitation is, we can express in terms of a mathematical formula, even though we cannot write down this, uh, exactly this uh, the force due to the constraint, but we can write down this. Again, in this case, you can see it does not depend on time. So it is the now two, zero, uh, uh, nomic. Now another case, Implicitly depend on time, but not explicitly, so we still can see, say this. This is an example I give you. Let's see this case. Again, it's a pendulum, but that is not the root, it's a spring. So, um, spring, pendulum. So now we have this string here, and then now. This, here, this is uh, the object. So here is me. Okay. And uh, suppose we have a L, and any time we have M or theta, so that is mass of x, y. So in this case, we know the spring, the length spring will change, right? Due to this motion. But in any time, and any time, Instantaneous time t, we know this x square plus y square uh, uh, minus uh, plus z. Uh, okay, let's uh, consider three dimension. Z square square minus l square equal to zero. But l is implicitly implicit. Why I, use, I say this way, that is in the later we are going to introduce generalized coordinates. And L is one of the generalized coordinates. As a coordinate itself, it does not uh, we select as independent variables. So that is uh, dependent on time explicitly. We just consider the x, y, z only have this uh, constraint and given L, we always have it. But L itself is chain. So that is not constraint, it is uh, the variable itself. That makes sense? Okay, so this is implied means here, implied because L change, but for given L, we know the X and the Y, Z follow this constraint. So that is, uh, oh, sorry, that is this. Now, let's go to some of the constraint is just uh, the depend on time explicitly. See what kind of a constraint. So now we go to, Leo, Dominic. Uh, in this case, let's also select. Uh, I think I have a 
three examples. Okay, and the simple pendulum uh, here you will see the pendulum dates are fixed, it's, the position is not fixed. Uh, this table point and the uh, uh, simple harmonic. So pictures like this. Okay, I have a pay, uh, this uh, payroll here, right? So in at any at instantaneous time is L, and we have a mass here. Say so just consider in the two dimension. So here, oscillate. So that is this. Uh, this one is uh, move oscillate as a simple harmonic here, and then the uh, simultaneously the, the pendulum is also to make this uh, oscillation. So what happened in this case? Let's first consider x again. x, uh, um, okay. So if we select this is an x component. So here this is an x t, right? And this x, so this is, a, because this now is a, it also move. It's not here. Then we select this difference. This x is the x minus x t, right? is on the class y square minus u square equal to zero. Right? So this is a this is an x <coughs> minus x t, right? So because x t always change. So that different change and uh, that gives us this uh, relative position that is x components of L and y components still the same. So that is what but then we have also expression for x t. XT is oscillate, so suppose this uh, as equilibrium X naught cosine omega T. So now you can see this one is explicitly the can of half. And uh, uh, for this case, it has to be the Okay, so I think Another one, you can see second case again is a uh, pendulum, but this pendulum is fixed on the so or attached on the moving box. So in this case, that means x m minus x, right? Square plus y m square minus l square equal to zero. But x is if we keep constant motion, so x depends on time explicitly. So that is uh, uh, the case. The uh, constant that depend on time, and we call that is a uh, you know, Number three, for another one, if we have a B, sliding on the uniformly, this uh, uniform rotate Y, right? So that is uh, sliding on uniform Okay. 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 Okay.
horizontal. So let's do the horizontal plan here. Suppose we just consider the horizontal, right? So that is x, y, and uh, this y is still tape, right? So that's suppose in any case, we have let's get to this uh, thing as y. That's the location. Uniform notation is omega t. That is the angle. And uh, this uh, uh, b is inside. This b. So how to describe this? Constraint we know the b can only limit within the wire, right? Cannot go out of wire. But wire itself also ro uh, uniformly uh, rotate. So that means if we select this x and y, x and y component b, then we have a related case of x to be equal to. You can select this r as a final t and this angle. Angle, sorry, angle equal to omega t, right? So that is r, r, the distance also change, right? Because that is uh, b move down, uh, up and down. So r is function time, and then cosine omega t. This is an uh, explicitly dependent on time. Since this uh, uh, x component uh, always depend on which angle, and this angle always change, this t. y is r t sine. So you see, in this case, the, the theta is dependent on time. So we have explicitly dependent on time. This constraint we call this uh, uh, real, uh, real phenomenon. Okay. <coughs> so now we can go to the uh, next step. We say that we cannot express the constraint <coughs> force, but we can express the effect of constraint force in terms of mathematical equation of constraint. Now the next step, let's go back to solve, see how can we solve the equation of motion for each particle in an n particle system. We already derived the formula, right? So now we are going to discuss equation of motion. Okay. We are going to see what is the difficulties. Okay, so, so the equation motion, the difficulty if we consider constraint, you will see the difficulties. Okay. So, this is uh, for n particle, right? We have i from one to n. For each n particle, we know the dynamics of each particle. The medium motion is the light force on this. Uh, the net force on the particle, right? So how many equations we have for n equations? Okay. Um, but now, due to the constraint, you can see x and y, or x and y and does not depend on uh, independent each other. They depend, since we follow this equation, right? So that means this one, uh, no. That means you solve this equation, what does it mean? We have n equations, but this n equation does not independent each other, do not independent each other. When you solve Ri, you have to consider Rj. So your equation, you can consider those n equations, actually, you can also solve independently. You have to consider together and then um, to, to, to uh, as a packet, right? So that makes difficulty in things because this is independent, uh, not independent. Second one, okay. Second one is very important here. Look at this one. Each particle has a net force. Net force we have a like external, internal, or you say the non-conservative, conservative. Okay, all force now, since we introduce constraint, we are going to classify the total force in terms of applied and constraint. All the force does, uh, uh, which is not uh, come from the constraint code applied, and force constraint. So we are going to uh, 
if I use apply, I just say that all the four together, if it's not constrained, we call together with this apply, and all the force due to the constraint, we call this one. Okay, so now, when you put this one into this formula, we need to analyze the force, right? We need to analyze this one. How can we analyze this one? This is a troublemaker. Since we cannot express the force due to the constraint expressed, uh, expressly or uh, straightforward, right? So that is difficult, much difficult than this one. If this is non, uh, uh, not independent, we can select independent and then later we say this is like general coordinates, but this one is very difficult. That is the reason now developed from Newtonian mechanics, we are going to shift or try to the analytical mechanics to avoid this one. So how to do that? How to do this, let's do one by one. How to solve this, let's go first to deal with this one first, then we come to here. Okay, so how to solve those problem, uh, those difficulties? This is our uh, difficulties. Our next job, right? Okay, so first one, the first, for the first difficulty, we can do this one. First difficulty, or, or, For the first difficulty, what we can do, since this is the only it says that the dependent or independent, we are going to introduce uh, okay, I think I'll give a name first. Introduce a general lines for this. Let's use Q now, QG. So that means if we introduce that means instead of to deal with the Ri, we are going to introduce QG. Those QG is generalized coordinates. So I'm going to, since we introduce this concept, right, we are going to discuss the, um, how, uh, what is the general coordinates, how to determine general coordinates. So here, uh, let me first, let me introduce this, right? So. Uh, the P is how much G, so we need this QG must be independent. Right? If, if it dependent, there's no meaning, right? We want to introduce another side of a general coordinate, such as to replace this one, and those are independent. Then we can deal with the equation and the to show, right? So that is required, independent, okay? Then question is how to determine how much, first we need to know how much independent coordinates we need to select. Yes. If we have for n particles, what is the number of degree of freedom, right? So now we need the number of degree of freedom. How to determine that equal to, that's initially we have us three, N, right? N particle. Each one has three degree, degree freedom, N, Y, Z. That is without any constraint. Then we are going to subtract how many constraints? The condition of constraint. So, uh, 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 okay, let me write down. That defined is N. So, number of degree freedom is lower N, that's equal to this. Now, how to determine this? K is number of constraint, equation of constraint. Okay, so here, this constraint, uh, I think there's condition, that is the first condition, second one, this constraint will be polynomial. Others will not give us or determine number of the degree of freedom. So here, this is a condition. To select the general coordinates, so I think that the condition for select general coordinates, that means the constraints be holonomic, and then we can have the, the, the independent general coordinates. So suppose we have, uh, uh, let me use R, 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 R
uh, let's say general, we can also include 10, right? Zero. So alpha equal to, uh, equal to one, two, how many? They have a k. Like uh, I say here, I have a two, right? So depend on how many equation of construction you have. For a given system, and you are going to write down the formula for each formula or each equation of construction, and you count how many. Then this k gave us number of this, so you're going to subtract here. Then that gave us number of the total number of degree freedom for independent general coordinates. So that is uh, how we uh, first uh, uh, do this. And now, as I said, first, that's the independent. Now, the, how to select the general coordinates? Generalized coordinates may be like a position coordinate, or angles, or like after you, for example, if you want to uh, fully extension of the position, then you have a coefficients. Those coefficients can also be as a general coordinate, or energy, or angular momentum. So, oh, so, oh, okay. Can be, uh, okay, that's can be, right? Can be involved. To serve, to serve as coordinates, to serve as general coordinates. Example, right? Example like positions. X, I, 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 G, I. Yes, we can select this. Or angles. Or this, uh, uh, as I said, amplitude, amplitude of free uh, uh, transfer, of expansion, sorry, expansion of Ri, or energy and momentum. So, depends. Which case? which one is suitable to categorize or describe the system, and we are going to select those as a general coordinates, but how many? It's first you need to count how many equations of the uh, uh, strip constraint, then you are going to uh, uh, determine that. Okay. And uh, uh, of course, this also required we have a, the select, you can select any, right? But you have to make sure that the General code you select can categorize the all feature of all or, uh, uh, or define the the, the, uh, the position of this uh, system, or uh, categorize the um, the state of the system. So that we make sure you have uh, this. Uh, so I have a, you see I have a several condition for this one. You can consider this as a first independent, second one independent means we can need to select this. Second one is polynomial. This one is fine, right? So we have a called the complete. Complete means that you can uh, um, uh, uh, describe describe If you, you select which you cannot characterize this state of or status of the motion, that is not a good general point. Uh, okay, then the next one, how to select, right? We introduce, that means we have to avoid the first difficulty we introduce the general point. We know the general point we select, follow this condition, then how to do it. Now let's play. How to choose? That depends. 
this really case uh, 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 depends. So we cannot give a general formula, but we have a step, several step or procedure, right? Step one. Step one, we need to find the general uh, the, the equation of constraint, right? Find all the equations of constraint. That is replayed, right? We already played before. So for given system, you're going to find the least all the possible equations of constraint. Suppose, this, of course, this is a holonomic. Most cases are holonomic. So then I'm going to write down I alpha. R1, Rn, and maybe time dependent equal to zero, so alpha from one, say we have a k. So once we find, then you can de determine the degree of freedom. Degrees of freedom n equal to 3n minus k, right? So then we can define, okay, how many independent, uh, 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 yeah, independent, the general component we need to select. We need to know how many first. That is step one. Then step two. Okay, step two is once we did that, we are going to select, choose a general coordinate, generalized coordinate. This is a key, right? This we are going to play some example to see how to choose. But we need how many we are going to choose. Once you know how many and you can select, then the third one is you are going to write down the trend, we call this transformation equation. Because general, we need to find the relation between general coordinates and the, the real position. Since the dynamic is a real position here, right? This is Ri, not Qi, not Qg. So once we introduce the general coordinates, we need to find the relation. That we call the transformation equation. Now let's say this R, uh, just this I, I from one and so on. If one, okay, that's be the function of Q1, Qn, okay, and uh, uh, maybe time, if the holonomic is also depend on time, so maybe so I'm going to write down here. So that is the, we call this a transformation equation. Not only this, you need to also do this. Since later in the analytic mechanics, we need kinetic energy. We need this term, right? So you need, once you have this, you need to do the DK, total time DK, which is also function of Q and then for Q also do the DK, right? Q1 dot, Q dot, and time. See here the difference. So these two equations you need to write down because when you write down here, we are going to substitute this into the equation motion. Then the equation is only depend on the independent general coordinates. This disappears. So that is the goal to avoid the first difficulties. Okay, uh, I think uh, let's do some examples. How they do that? Uh, Examples and see how uh, we select this uh, general coordinate, how to set up this uh, or write down this transformation equation. First, how to determine the number of degree of freedom, right? Okay, I'm going to do the examples. First one, uh, a particle moving inside of inner surface of sphere, which we have to be told in order to do in more details, particles moving. This is a radio of this sphere, and this is the particle here, x, y, z. 
So this move, okay. And uh, you know this move. Uh, let's first, okay, that is picture, right? Let's first step one. Equation of constant, right? This we will be right on the whole. So we know this uh, R squared. Now, I didn't say x, y, z because now we introduce is a use r theta phi. Since that baby for the spherical, for the, this kind of motion, spherical cone is much better, right? So we have this is a yeah, this is a theta, and phi is This, uh, this circle is uh, the perpendicular or this uh, plan. You can consider x, y, this x, y plan, and this z, right? So here, this is the part. OK, so with this, we know r squared minus capital R squared equal to 0. That is the uh, uh, equation of constant. Do we have more? More equation of constant? No, right? So that means this gave us f, uh, f x, y, z equal to 0, alpha, and alpha is only equal to 1, right? Only 1. So the number of degree, once we have uh, uh, right down this uh, function, so now we can do n equal to 3. Let me use the formula uh, first, right? This one. Now, 3, n, how many? Only one particle, right? And k is 1. So how many? We have only two independent degree freedom. So we are going to select two general coordinates. That is step 1. Step 2. We are going to choose. We are going to choose how many? Two general lines coordinates. Now the key is which one we are going to select. It's really up to it. So the, the, the way is we are going to select the general component such that it is easier for us to write on this, make this uh, uh, clear. So you can see here, I'm going to select theta and phi. This way, whatever the, the, the change, it changes theta and also change phi, right? Since they are fixed, right? So I'm going to select this one as our general G F from one to only two, right? We select this. Okay, so that is we select. Then step three. Right on this transformation equation. Transformation equation now x, right? R vector. So you can uh, uh, x component y component z component x components. And this is uh, we know this is just come uh, transform from the Cartesian coordinate to the spherical coordinate, right? So we know that R, uh, uh, x is R, R project to this part, right? Sine, sine theta, and this one, and project to the cosine part, right? So sine theta, cosine part, okay? And the y, R sine theta, sine part. Z is R cosine theta, right? So that is a three equation, which is a transformation equation from the real position and express real position in terms of the general coordinates, theta and phi, which we introduced. So right, that is this one. In this case, theta phi does not depend on time, so we do not have the time dependent. Now, as I said, we need also to do this. So now let's do x dot. x dot to the time derivative. Here, both are time dependent, right? Theta and phi. So be careful here, you need first, let's do R, and keep the, this, uh, um, this uh, uh, keep this one constant to this, so we have a cosine theta, theta dot, and cosine phi, that is a, keep this constant to this, and then keep this one to this, right? And the minus R sine theta sine phi, phi dot. Is that clear? Okay, since these two are 
dependent, right? Uh, dependent on time. So same thing for the y is r. If we do this first, that is also cosine theta, theta dot, and sine phi minus a uh, now minus plus because sine phi is positive, right? Plus r sine theta sine phi. Oh, oh, sorry, cosine phi. And the z dot is just simply minus r sine theta theta dot. So we have those equations and that, that later we are going to substitute into this uh, equation of motion. Then we can do uh, uh, just those equation of motion now only depend on the general coordinates which are independent each other. Then we can solve the equation of motion. Uh, uh, it's doable at least, right? So that is how to uh, solve this uh, difficulty first one to deal with the dependent Coordinates R i and replaced by this uh, independent general coordinates G q. That is the first example. So now let's go to the second example. See how we find this uh, general coordinate. Again, we go back to a pendulum, a double pendulum. Okay. Now um, uh, when we go. If I say vertical, since uh, we just consider the motion in two dimensions, right? So let's remember this uh, system, the double pendulum, we have this. Okay, L1 is M1 here, and then another M2 is X1, Y1, and then X2, Y2. Two, right? Now, replace the vertical, the first one, let me introduce angle theta 1, second one, angle theta 2. So again, in this case, let's first step 1, find this uh, equation motion, right? So now, we already read before, so now I just repeat this, uh, since this uh, is simple, we have, uh, minus L1 squared equal to zero. So that is equation one. Another is about this uh, X2, Y2, right? That is X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared minus L2 equal to zero. So we have two equations of construction. K equal to two, right? If K equal to two, now we are going to find the degree of freedom N equal to, okay, here is uh, interesting. Uh, if we only consider two dimensions, so this is a 2n instead of 3n, right? If I you consider 3, it's also fine. If you consider 3, we have another two equation of constraint. z1, z2 also equal to 0. Then we have a 4. So either way, okay, let me write down this way. Minus k, k is 2, right? So that is n, n, sorry, it's a formula. k, how many? Two particles, right? Minus two. So we have a four, so that's a two, right? Or n minus three n minus k, right? So this case three multiplied two k is four, right? If we consider this, I use the product. Okay, in this case, if you consider this case, k is a four. So that is depend on you just ignore the z direction of the uh, 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 the, the direct motion, then that's fine. We just uh, consider this a two because this gives us. You you consider z as three, then you have to include this two equation constraint. Okay, so same thing, right? Two. That is will not change. Total number of uh, independent general coordinates will not change either you select this one, this one, because uh, if you select this one, you have more equation of the constraint. Okay, so now go to next step. How to choose the general coordinate? We know we need only two. Step two. Which one you are going to select? Since we have two, I prefer use these two angles. Since these two angles, the first angle can represent or categorize the motion of first one. Second angle can categorize the oscillations, right? So I'm going to select theta one, theta two. 
This is, as I said, which one that is really experience. If you do more, you know which one you, 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 you prefer to use. Yes. Uh, for step one, equation two, it's supposed to minus L T squared, right? Yes, I guess. Yes. yes. OK. So we select this. Now the step three, we are going to write down the equation of uh, the transformation equation. So here we have four x1 by one, x2 by one, x2, right? So now let's write one by one. x1 equal to, if I select theta one, that's u1 sine, right? u1 sine theta one is this x1, right? So that's very easy, u1 sine theta one. You see why I select theta? That makes uh, uh, the relation also clear. So y is also here x by cosine. Cosine theta 1. Then how about x2? x2 is this part plus this part, right? So this part is L2 sine theta 2. So that is L1 sine theta 1 plus L2 sine theta 2. And similarly for y2 is L1 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2. So that's why you can see I select the theta 1, theta 2 is very clear because it's a transformation equation. Then next step, to the derivative. To the derivative since only the angle uh, change, right? So L1 cosine theta 1 and theta 1 dot right here y1 dot is u1 minus u1 sine theta 1 and theta 1 dot. And the x2 dot is u1 cosine theta 1 theta 1 dot plus u2 cosine theta 2 theta 2 dot. y2 dot is minus u1 sine if you write on this clearly, uh, correctly, then when you solve this equation of motion, you will not have mistake. So this is sometimes this, for example, this sign sometimes mistake. Then your your, your result is the wrong result. So be careful. That is the way we how to. Select these general coordinates and then the how to write down this transformation equation. Uh, okay, I know you have another class. So we are going to, uh, 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 next uh, Tuesday, we are going to continue to discuss the second difficulty. Because we know this uh, constraint, right? It's difficult to express. How to avoid this in the equation motion? That is very important. Uh, that is uh, why we introduce or uh, uh, develop this uh, analytical mechanics with the Lagrangian, the equation motion that it comes from to deal with this. All right. Uh, yeah, just uh, have a nice weekend, a uh, long weekend, but I know you, you will be busy. <laughs> so, yeah, just focus on your qualified exam. All right. Thank you. And, uh, yeah. I will not assign homework for this. Uh, this one, of course, we need to finish up one. This is still takes time. <coughs> so you just uh, uh, focus that. Hope you pass. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.